you like a snack, sir? Ooh, thank you. Hey everyone, my name's John, and I'm a human doing. And what are we doing today? I'm making a cleaver-inspired charcuterie board, or a cutting board. Here's how we do it. So the first step in making the cutting board or charcuterie board is to rip your Baltic birch into narrow strips. In this case, I'm using 18 millimeter Baltic birch and I'm cutting it into half inch strips. I'd recommend using Baltic birch uh, for projects like this because Baltic has more layers, it's a hardwood, and generally, uh, unlike other plywoods, Baltic birch is, is void free. So it's gonna give you a much better result uh, in the end. Once all your strips have been cut, you can then lay them out and get ready for a glue up. So you're just gluing up a regular panel. I should have used a roller, um, but I didn't have one at hand, so I used my brush, but it's uh, therapeutic, I guess. So lay up your panel and glue it up like you would any other panel with the exception of uh, the edge. You don't want to have a 90 degree edge. In this case, I'm doing 45. You could do other angles, but in order to get the, in, the, in my case, a chevron pattern, I'm gluing it up at a roughly a 45 degree angle. It does make glue up a little bit more tricky. You have to use more clamps, but it's, uh, it, it gives you a better yield of the material in the end, so it's less waste. And we can see now here, the panel is all glued up. Those strips that you can see with the F-clamps, they are put there to keep the panel nice and flat as it dries. Yeah, this job always sucks, but I would recommend uh, scraping the panel once it's dry. Get rid of any high spots just to make the panel easier to handle as you move forward. It's recommended for sure. Well, now that your panel is finally uh, dressed and ready, it's time to start cutting the first half of that chevron. So you'll notice I just tacked on with a few brad nails a piece of MDF, and it's just for the first cut. So I put that on, it gives me a nice straight cut, and then I can make sure that all the future cuts are equally as straight. It will help with glue up in the future. And one shot I wanted to make sure I got in was a, one of the pieces you're going to see in a second is going to come apart. And that's just because the lamination didn't work. It wasn't actually from my glue joint. It was just the... Uh, the nature of the Baltic birch. So you'll see here it, it comes apart. That's not a problem. I mean, obviously you still stay safe when you're cutting it, but that piece there is still completely usable. There's actually two of them, I believe, that broke, and I'm gonna show you here how exactly I fixed those. And that's, you could just put them together with a little bit of CA glue or PVA and just glue them together. In my case, I cut them both on the miter saw at 45. And then I just, because I was, this was my, uh, my last sort of job for the night, I just clamp it down to the table and then I use a bar clamp uh, to connect the two of them together and I leave it overnight. So um, not a big deal. So before you get starting laying out your panel, you wanna have an idea how you want to lay it out. So in my case, I, I was trying to make it look like a Damascus blade. So I thought the closest to that would be kind of a mixed chevron uh, pattern. So it's just, uh, you can see this guy and this, you can, see, you can see the pattern. So it's chevrons, but they're opposing each other. Every pair is opposing. And I thought that was kind of a, a Damascus looking, uh, looking finish. So here's the glue up for that chevron pattern I was just mentioning. One thing I would note with plywoods uh, like this Baltic birch here is it is a little bit more thirsty than say maple or, or an oak hardwood. So I'm a little bit excessive on the amount of glue. I'm not worried about, um, about any, any squeeze out. I don't care, I'll clean that up, that's easy. But I wanna make sure that it's, it's a well, strong, you know, strong panel when it's finished. So I definitely recommend a little bit extra glue. As far as the glue up itself, uh, I put this panel together just like I would anything else. Um, so there's about four bar clamps, but then I'm also using those vertical pieces there. And they're just a gain to make sure that the panel stays nice and flat uh, as it dries. Uh, definitely wanna keep this thing from cupping if I can help that. Have I mentioned how much I love scraping panels? It's awesome. My arms are like Popeye. On to sanding. Everybody loves to sand. Uh, I'm pretty lucky I've got a 16-inch uh, drum sander, so it does make the job much easier. But if, if all you've got is a, a palm sander or belt sander, uh, that will do the job just as well. Um, this is just a little bit less, uh, less work on my part. It does take a lot of time, though. I think this was probably 30 passes. Um, I'm using 120 grit paper. So it's, it's definitely not a, a quick process, but it keeps the panel nice and flat and true, which uh, for a project like this is something I, I, I definitely want to, uh, 
to make sure it is a gift. I gotta make sure it's perfect. So the base of the cutting board, charcuterie board, is a piece of half inch particle. Uh, it's just, so it's particle board with a walnut veneer. And I'm just applying uh, a variety of curves. I'm just sort of getting the look that I want. Uh, I took a, uh, some images from, from online and I'm just trying to mimic, uh, mimic that look. So to get the curves that I'm making for this cutting board or charcuterie board, I'm just using a piece of trim with some string attached on either side. And if you loosen or tighten that piece of string, uh, it will go anything from straight to whatever radius you want up until the point where it, it breaks. I mean, it's very easy to use. You just put it on your leg, tighten it up. You know. So once you're happy with your design, you've got all your curves done, the bandsaw is probably the easiest way to get those pieces cut. And then once the bandsaw portion is done, you just want to smooth it up a little bit with a sander. I mean, I'm using a stationary sander here, uh, just a disc sander, but you could use anything. I mean, your hand sander is fine. Um, like I said, you just want a relatively smooth edge when you're finished. Once sanding is all finished, it's time to mate the two pieces together. So I'm applying, again, a slightly excessive amount of glue. You don't need to use this much glue if it was a hardwood, but in my case, because of the ply pattern plywood, I just want to make sure that it's, uh, it's well seated to the, to the two parts. I don't want them to delaminate in the future. So here I am gluing it up. I'm, once again, using probably an excessive amount of clamps. Uh, there's probably much better ways to do it, but I, uh, I, cho I chose this way. So I apologize for the aesthetics, but it works. So enjoy the glue up. So with the glue dry and the clamps removed, uh, the first step would be to trim the excess. I'm not actually showing the, the first portion that was with the bandsaw. I just trimmed everything off and I left roughly a sixteenth of an inch all the way around. Um, this portion here is with a three quarter inch straight cutter with a top bearing and I'm using the, the particle board as the guide. You have to be very careful if you're going to be doing it with a, with a router because you can tear out. As long as you're, you're cautious, you should be okay. Uh, blowouts, you can fix them, but it does create more work, so just be super careful if you're doing it with a router. Uh, you can also use your sander to get the edge. It does take a lot longer, um, but it is a little bit safer if you're concerned at all about a blowout. So. When you get to the, to the curved portions, any kind of curved portions, there's lots of ways you can do it. You could steam bend it. You could just cut out the shape with a router or, or on a sander. In my case, I wanted to laminate thinner, uh, thinner pieces, so I felt that was the, um, the easiest for, for this particular project. It does use a lot of clamps, but it's, it's a pretty straightforward process, as you can see on the video. So the first process in making those strips is to take some hard maple that I happen to have uh, in the shop and I'm going to be ripping them down. It's three quarter inch thick material and I'm cutting them right here at one inch wide. And then I take that one inch uh, material and I make them narrower so they'll be five sixteenths of an inch thick by one inch wide when I'm finished. And that gives me enough, um, enough meat to take down the, on, on the planer, which you'll see shortly. Uh, one other thing I want to note and I'm sure if you're a woodworker, you've already noted it, is that this blade is dull. <laughs> it's really dull. I should have uh, sharpened it beforehand, but hopefully that's a video I can bring in the future, um, how I sharpen them. I do have my own sort of sharpening system, so hopefully I can bring that to you. Uh, but yeah, that's a pretty dull blade. So here I am taking these pieces down to their finished thickness, which is going to be an eighth of an inch. In total, I did three passes, and that was enough to get to the, th to the finished thickness that I wanted. Um, it also cleaned up uh, some of those burn marks from the blade that was, uh, as, as for mentioned, not particularly sharp. One tip I have for, for this DeWalt planer, or probably any planer, is to run multiple pieces at a time. You'll see I'm always putting in one piece in just as one is finishing, and that's just to prevent snipe from happening. It definitely helps. So now that all your parts are plain to thickness, again, roughly an eighth of an inch, uh, it is time for a glue up. So in this case, you just take however many slices you want or how many strips you want of your, um, in this case, maple, and you just stack them together like a sandwich. And then you're going to be using, or at least I'm using, the cutting board itself as the form. So I've taped up the form just to keep the glue from sticking to it and make sure that, that, that it will release properly. 
but I'm just fastening it on or, or clamping it on. And this is going to retain most of the shape. There will be some spring back, but not enough that you can't handle afterwards. Like other parts of uh, the glue up for this pro project, I'm using F clamps here to make sure that the, the lamination stays flat and true. Uh, this doesn't really help attach it to the, uh, to the cutting board itself. It's just there to make sure that the laminations, when they're, uh, when they're dry, that they all line up together to keep them relatively flat. Now the width of those laminations is about a sixteenth of an inch higher or thicker than the cutting board itself. So I run them through the planer just to clean them up to make sure that they're ready for uh, miters. Now I use a pencil to mark the location where to put the uh, each of the curved portions, but I use a knife to actually tell um, where the what the angle is. So that's not not dissimilar from any other uh, miter type project. Anything you're doing corners on, so you just mark your corner. And then you take it over to the chop saw and you, as long as you follow the line, you know you're going to be close. I usually make them just slightly proud so that I have a little bit to trim if I have to make any adjustments. So as you can see here, the miter fit is pretty good. So all that's left is to glue and clamp these pieces on. Now the, blue, the green tape you see here, that's only on the top and bottom surface and that's just again to help uh, keep clean up to a minimum. I can just peel the tape off when the glue is dry. So I'm just clamping these pieces up. It doesn't actually take a lot. I mean the spring back was fairly minimal on most of these pieces. So it glued up fairly well and you can see here me removing the tape and that just takes a lot of the sanding away because no one loves to sand. And thanks to the tape there wasn't lots of sanding required but I did still need to make sure that the trim pieces here were nice and flush with the backside, uh, the walnut being the back. So I made sure that everything was, was clean and smooth. I'm using 120 grit sandpaper, and that is more than enough for uh, this project. It's just an oil finish, so I don't have to go too crazy. And the top itself, again, just like the back, just making sure that the trim pieces are nice and even and smooth. To help soften up the edges, I decided to use my eighth inch roundover bit uh, around the bottom side uh, all the way around. Again, it's just uh, this will be handled by hands uh, quite a bit, so I wanted to keep those edges as soft and smooth as I could. On two edges of the top side, I decided to use a 45 degree chamfer bit. I thought this would give it more of a look of a blade on a knife. The handle is made from Wenge. Um, I pronounce it Wenge. You pronounce it however you like. Uh, it's very dark. I like the contract with, contrast between the birch plywood, the maple, and, uh, and obviously the dark handle. Um, it's a very, very strong, very dense material, easy to work with, and uh, like I said, it has the, the aesthetic that I wanted for this particular project. So, And because this is a one-up project, at least I think it's going to be a one-up project, I just drew the handle by hand. I had a piece of wenge from uh, a chessboard that I'll be building in the future, so um, I just cut it out in the bandsaw, sanded it by hand. And you can see here, simple enough handle. I did the relief cuts on the back with the table saw, and that, those relief cuts there are just to make it fit over the panel itself. To fasten the handle, I decided to use uh, furniture connecting bolts. Um, I think they're called joint connecting bolts uh, if you go to Home Depot. But really, they're just cosmetic um, bolts. They, they have a much nicer aesthetic than standard, you know, nut and bolts, and uh, they do a very good job. They're nice and strong. So it was a perfect choice for this particular project. So you can see the finish of choice is Danish oil. So it's uh, kind of like a linseed oil and it is a food safe product, which is uh, perfect for something like this. Uh, as an added bonus, it is uh, probably the easiest finish of any finish that I'm aware of to apply. You simply put it on, you do not put it on liberally, you put on um, very lightly and just rub it in and just keep rubbing until you get the finish uh, that you're looking for. And it's a very matte finish. Uh, it doesn't offer a high degree of protection, but uh, for something like this, which is again more, more cosmetic, it, it, it does the job well. Now all that's left is to put in your uh, connecting bolts and the project itself is done. Thanks very much for joining me. I appreciate it. Hope you enjoyed the build of this charcuterie board slash cutting board. Uh, it is off to my sister's house. It's a birthday gift. So hopefully she enjoys it. And hopefully you guys can join me again on the next one. Thanks. And because of the contrast and color, I thought... <coughs> I got 
Ritz Crackers.